this looks familiar. It's Eschaton Media's booth. And look, here's Michael Pucci, creator of uh, Dystopia Horizon. How's it going? How would you like to uh, show me some new sure. uh, Kronos games? Uh, this is Kronos, which is our uh, universal tabletop and barf system. Uh, basically, what we want to do is we want to make a system that was fast-paced, uh, was able to go back and forth between tabletop and LARP, and was something that uh, was easy to play. Uh, a lot of time we found with theatrical LARPs, conflict resolution became very slow, which got in the way of actually having fun. Uh, it originally started with the uh, Jaffa Brothers, two uh, uh, members of Eschaton Media, and we ended up work, reworking it from X Arcana to a universal system. Now, the way it works is you build a character deck based on your core character concept, the professions that you would have learned, unique augments, tricks, abilities, powers, things of that nature, and your equipment. And what we want to do is keep things for the base set as universal as possible so that you can apply it to any game you want. So what you would do is you would go ahead and you would take and you'd be building a character deck. So you have your base card and let's say ruler, I'm gonna go with sci-fi type character. Okay. She's gonna have a combination of soldier skills and political skills. She's a little geeky, a little bit of a tech nerd. I want to play someone who's more on the up and up, so I'm not going to do Grifter, and I want more action than intelligence, so I'm going to put the Savant away as well. Going with a sci-fi aspect, so I want to have a sidearm, and we'll go with a precision melee weapon. This is now your character deck. Across the top, it says Acumen, Resolve, Dexterity, and Brawl. And all you have to do is stack your card to figure out what your total number is. I'm using a sidearm, which is a dexterity weapon, so I would go four, two, two, I get to call an eight. If you slide the cards to the side, it has your defense mechanics. Now, this use works with both tabletop and LARP. So what we wanted to do was be able to make it so a person in a timed combat round would go, I shoot you, five. And you go, oh, sh uh, defense, six, I get out of the way. And be able to do slow motion role play so you're not dropping character. The other things we wanted to do was make it so that at the table or in a LARP, you're not having to go back into the book to figure out how things work. Okay. So all the mechanics for everything that you can do on the card. is on the card. We've got a game coming out. It's uh, 1959. Everything they said about rock and roll is true. Devils in the music. So greasers, horns, the whole nine. That's uh, Devil Days. If you want to take the world or the equipment from there and you're like, yeah, but I really want to do something that's high magic, so I'm going to take uh, the thaumaturgical style magic from Ex Arcana and put the two together. You can. I heard that you guys were testing this with like teams of up to like 20 people in combat Over running through people. it. We Over did 40. A 42 person mass combat, last person standing. It was the second time they had ever played the system. It took less than 10 minutes. Systematically, it's basically working like stacking your stuff and then bidding. Like, I've got six, I hope that's enough. Exactly. So that's really, There's, that sounds good. The other thing we did was we used ethers, which are the uh, sort of universal constant. Okay. Uh, if you're playing a game of magic, it's what fuels your magic. If okay. you're playing a human game, it could be your adrenaline. All right. But under all of it, it's an ether. And your ethers have attributes on it. You can either expend it to activate power, because they have cost. Ah. Or, you'll notice it has a statistic. Let's say so I'm, you can spend it to bump one of your attributes for a very temporary... Exactly. Okay. That's exactly it. So if something oh, that's is, actually really neat. Well, I'm going to ask uh, a two-part question here. Shoot. One, uh, what is next on the table for Eschaton Media, and when does Devil Days come out? I want to see, <laughs> when, is, when is that happening? Uh, we're hoping Devil Days will come out next year. We're talking about okay. doing a Kickstarter for it. It's right. mostly written already. We have to do art and layout for it. Oh, man. We've already done testing for it, too. Oh, there's so much Kickstarters that I want to get into now. The next things that we're doing, uh, we've got the ST deck coming out for this on the 20th. And then we have a generic power set that's coming out for this. Uh, we also have another Dystopia Rising book coming out this fall. Oh, really? Which covers the Florida, uh, okay. the Rum Coast region. Oh, all right. And I just finished writing the one for the spring, which is Seattle, Washington, into uh, the British Columbia area. Okay. So you guys just put out a new book, didn't you? Yes, we did. That was our Ironworks book, which uh, focuses on the Chicagoland area. 
Right on. And it goes into a lot of the background behind, like, the Iron Slaves, the Light of Heat on Faith, and oh, okay. also goes into the Reclaimers as we start going into the Canadian territories. Oh, all right. So that's uh, finally detailing our area. <laughs> However, you do get the explanation of where the uh, Iron Slaves come from, which is primarily really? a Chicago land area. That makes sense. I can also see probably Detroit. Yes, without a doubt, Detroit as well. You said that this was, uh, you could be, it could be universally done for LARP or tabletop, right? Correct. The same mechanics you use for LARP, you use for tabletop as well. Right on. Uh, so, where can we get these uh, you can if either, you can't make it to Gen Con? If you can't make it to Gen Con, you can get through drive through RPG. Okay. Also, what we did was the rule set. Uh, we want people to understand the game world that we're doing because we're doing something you just completely new. Okay. So you can download the rules in PDF format for free. All right. I want to thank uh, Michael Pucci for taking the time to talk with me thank and you. for uh, bringing us a really great product. Um, I can't wait to check this out. Party on, dude. <laughs> Party on, <Mike. laughs> This year... Um, Kevin Simbita of Palladium Books has uh, agreed again to talk with us very generously, and this time we're not going to lose all the footage. Kevin, tell me about the new games that are coming out of Palladium this year. Nothing. No, we got all kinds of cool stuff coming out. The most exciting one, of course, is Robotech RPG Tactics. Is our first venture in doing a uh, war game style tactical game. Um, the miniatures look fantastic. The rules are fast and, and fun. Um, it's basically Robotech in plastic, and it captures all the excitement, all the speed, all the action of Robotech. The reaction here, we've been demoing. We were supposed to get the darn product here to sell, but it was held up in customs. So that was a heartbreaker. But we had three or four copies here to show people. We've been demoing it all weekend. People who know Robotech love it. People who don't know Robotech love it. So that's exciting. We got, uh, this just came out. Shameless plug. I'd shame away, because I have been waiting on that. Hardcore. That's uh, the Rift's Megaverse and Flames. It carries our crossover series, Dominion War, um, into Rift's Earth, and it's wild. It's, it's really good. Um, we also have a new uh, Chuck Walton art book, which is spectacular. It's called Future Visions. And then we've got, uh, the Robotech Marines book coming out later this year. We've got one or two uh, new Dead Rain source books coming out this year. Uh, real quick, let me yeah. interrupt you and ask you about. Let me. I'm sorry. Let me uh, interrupt you and ask you about Robotech Marines. Uh, I'm pretty interested to hear a little bit about that if you got if you don't mind. Yeah, no, not not at all. It's basically uh, sort of the Sentinels. So, Robotech Marines is really cool because it's a space planet hopping type adventure source book. So we introduce new aliens, new mecha, all kinds of great stuff. Plus, of course, all kinds of information about the UEF Marines. And then Dead Rain, that's your uh, zombie apocalypse yes, with sir. a really interesting, very Palladium books twist. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have a time when we could expect those books? Yes, Graveyard Earth will be out October, November, and oh. uh, the, the Robotech Marine book will be out probably November, December. That's great. Oh, and we also got a Palladium Fantasy book coming out, the first one in a long time. Yeah. I take what? it you're a Palladium. What is it? It's uh, the Island Kingdom of Byzantium. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, man. Do you, uh, is there, does that mean that the line might be seeing a little bit more support? Is there a possibility we might see Land of the Damned Part 3? Absolutely. Probably next year. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that. I'm such a huge fan of that series. That's like, I actually played Palladium FRPG before I played Dungeons & Dragons. Oh wow, cool. Um, yeah, it's my personal favorite to play. I, I, my favorite game to write is Rifts, because there's so much you can do. That's my favorite so awesome. game to play is, thanks. My favorite game to play is Palladium Fantasy. So yeah, we want to do a whole lot more. We've got like four source books planned, and we might even, you'll be the first to know, we're thinking about doing a Palladium Fantasy Ultimate Edition with color plates and upgrades and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> wow. Is there any other products you guys have uh, coming out that you want to talk about right now? I mean, I do want to do, uh, I'm also planning on finally getting uh, the two long-awaited source books for Beyond the Supernatural. Oh. Yeah. 
That'll be next year. I wanted to get him out by the end of this I, year. I'm sorry. I'm going to complete. I have to completely geek out about that too because I've been. Uh, I, I'm a huge Beyond the Supernatural fan. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, you'll love these books. Yeah, I've been waiting on the supplements. Yep. Oh man. Yeah. Beyond wow. And, uh, I can't even do this interview right now. <laughs> I, I'm just like uh, I'm just kind of flitzing out here. Well. In fact, we have so many ideas for what was supposed to be Tome Grotesque, as in one tome. It's now Tomes Grotesque, because oh. we're going to do a whole series of cool mo monsters. Oh, man, that's so great. Oh, man, I'm totally just like, that destroyed my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about. Um, and we got a couple cool licenses we're working on that'll, really? that'll freak people out. I can't reveal what those okay. are yet, but All right. when people Something hear, to look forward to, people to keep their eyes on. One thing I did want to say, we did play the Robotech demo. That looks great. That's something that we're actually looking forward to uh, picking up for our own personal collection as well. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, the game is just so much fun. We, our, our whole mission on that was to bring Robotech to life on the tabletop, to capture all the experiences you see on, on the TV series. Um, so if you see it in an anime, you can do it in the game. And it's, it's epic. And let's, and let's face it, these are cool models. I, I, I think so. You know, um, Ninja Division's crew did a beautiful job. And, uh, yeah, they look great. Uh, and, and by the way, because everyone always wants to know, they always ask, will we be doing the other eras of Robotech? Will there be um, the Master Saga? Will there be the new generation? Yes, absolutely yes. So, and all these, well, we're going to probably do them in a couple different scales. So they'll be done in six millimeter. They'll probably be done in 15. And we might even do some special editions at, at a larger size. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is great. Oh man, I wanna, I wanna thank uh, Kevin Simbita for taking the time to talk to us and give us a whole bunch of stuff to give me little minor heart attacks. Oh, <laughs> uh, I actually didn't know about almost all of that yeah. before we started and uh, that is super exciting. Uh, thanks so much, man. My pleasure. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found the information in here just as exciting as we did, and we found it pretty damn exciting. We're gonna have another video tomorrow with some more cool stuff and some more interviews, so go ahead and click subscribe if you'd like uh, to be notified when that comes out. Also, here you can find a link to our latest review and the last two videos in this series of Gen Con, so thanks for watching. Have a great day.